appreciate uh, the Amir uh, an update uh, and assured him that our goal here is to be able to verify that Iran does not have a nuclear weapon uh, and that we will continue to press Iran on some of its other actions in the region uh, that often have a destabilizing effect. This agreement between Iran and the Western powers is dangerous for Israel. Therefore, I will leave next week for the United States to explain to the American Congress, since this is the body that influences the faith of the agreement, why the agreement is dangerous to Israel, dangerous to the region, dangerous to the whole world. Well, supposed details of a nuclear plan, a deal between the U.S. and Iran, are just starting to leak out, and there are reports of growing anxiety not only in Israel, but in Gulf state nations. On this issue of dealing with Iran, uh, Fox News polls, the most late, the latest polls uh, dealing with this. First, the president on Iran, uh, not tough enough. 70% of those polled said the president was not tough enough on Iran. What will stop Iran from getting nuclear weapons? Force will be necessary, 62%. Diplomacy and sanctions alone. Let's start there with our panel. Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard. A.B. Stoddard, associate editor of The Hill and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Charles. These last details that are coming out now about the agreement being time limited, meaning that in a decade, Iran can essentially become a legitimate nuclear power, develop its weapons without any restraints. And remember, this will mean a lifting of the sanctions. So Iran will be with a very strong economy, undeterred, nothing in any way holding it back. It's simply catastrophic. It's really unbelievable. And when Obama says we want to make sure it doesn't have a nuclear weapon, that was not the objective of these negotiations. It was to stop the Iranian nuclear program. There's six UN resolutions saying it has to stop enrichment. It allows enrichment. It's going to allow a new generation of uh, centrifuges. It's going to allow the development of ballistic missiles. It doesn't do anything about the development of an actual warhead that will go on a weapon that will attack either Israel or Europe or the United States. So it does none of that. And the worst element is it's going to end in time at which a point Iran will be a legitimate nuclear power. It is an unbelievably bad deal. It makes the Cuba deal look like a really good bargain, and it makes the sellout of uh, Ukraine at Minsk it looks like a success in comparison with this. And the reason is that a lot hinges on this, the fate of the Gulf states, of Israel, and ultimately of the United States. It's unbelievable that America would be agreeing to such a bargain. Secretary of State Kerry was up on Capitol Hill today, had an interesting back and forth with Senator Lindsey Graham on the issue of Iran's uh, efforts throughout the region. Do you agree with me that Assad is a puppet of the Iranian regime? Pretty much. Do you agree with me that Hezbollah is a <clears throat> subcontractor of the Iranian regime? Totally. Do you agree with me that Iran is trying to destabilize Bahrain? On a, there, there's been influence. I'm not sure to what degree, but we know that they have been involved with the Shia there. Do you agree with me that the Arabs in the region are very concerned about Iranian advancement? Yes. The greatest wreaking of havoc of all and the most destabilizing thing would be if, in fact, you had a nuclear-armed Iran that projected even more power and influence as today. Secretary Kerry went on to say, A.B., that there's not a deal now. Anybody who says there's a deal is wrong. And he said the policy with Iran is so that Iran does not get a nuclear weapon. That's actually not what the president said. He told the Emir of Qatar, we want to make sure these negotiations, our goal here is to verify that Iran does not have a nuclear weapon. Whether he's parsing words or not, uh, every word matters. Well, I'm going to say that um, you heard Secretary Kerry agreeing that Iran is everything that Senator Graham and most of the Republicans believe, and many Democrats as well, a sponsor of terror, um, a menace in the region, and, and that they need to be stopped from acquiring a nuclear weapon. The, I, I disagree with Charles, there is no deal. We have an entire month. Could we be right where we are today? Certainly. The administration is desperate for a deal. But a lot is going to happen. There's going to be an Israeli election. The prime minister is coming here next week to address the Congress. The news of the shortening of 
the restriction period by the deal to 10 years instead of 20 or 15 will certainly only embolden the opposition. I think we're not, as long as the Iranians and, and the Americans are still talking about centrifuges and sanctions and still in disagreement, no matter how many foreign ministers and energy chiefs they get together, and even President Rouhani's brother, I don't think we really see the progress that they're trying to tout. I don't think there's a deal yet. But in your scenario, it is the Iranians who turn down the deal, not President Obama. It's very possible. I want to bring up another topic, Steve. Your colleague Tom Jocelyn from the Weekly Standard reporting on the tie between Iran and terrorism. Uh, new information, and uh, it says this, under the terms of the agreement between Al-Qaeda and Iran, Al-Qaeda must refrain from conducting any operations within Iranian territory and recruiting operatives inside Iran while keeping Iranian authorities informed of their activities. Treasury revealed. In return, the government of Iran gave the Iran-based Al-Qaeda network freedom of operation and uninhibited ability to travel for extremists and their families. Al-Qaeda members who violate these terms run the risk of being detained by Iranian authorities. Yeah. The key point there is that that is a designation by the Obama administration's Treasury Department. Several different times the Obama administration has alleged in uh, its Treasury designations that there has been this secret agreement between the Iranian regime and Al-Qaeda where the Iranian regime has provided safe haven, training, support in any of a number of ways to Al-Qaeda, both for Al-Qaeda uh, core leaders going to Afghanistan and Pakistan, and later for the shipment of Al-Qaeda uh, operatives into Syria. I did an interview with a senior Obama administration official back in 2012 who said to me that Iran was the key node in Al-Qaeda's growing network, this is in April of 2012, because they were able to, to get from Iran Al-Qaeda operatives working in Iran, allowed to operate in Iran and send them to Afghanistan and Pakistan to replenish the stock as the U.S. government was droning the bad guys. Iran has played a key role in the growth of al-Qaeda. The administration wants to decouple the nuclear talks from the nature of the Iranian regime, but in reality, you can't decouple those. They're one and the same. Ahead of the prime minister's arrival here, how do you think this all plays back in Israel, and how does it play politically here? Well, politically here, I think you've got a growing opposition. I think people are becoming stunned by the degree to which this administration has acquiesced. Um, AB says that we don't have a deal, but it's even worse. This is the American offer. So it, if we're going to have a deal in the end, it's going to be even weaker than this. Iran has walked us from a position where we said no enrichment, uh, no development of, of, of a nuke, all the way to a point where we we are legitimizing it, we're granting it, and we are saying, well, we want to make sure it doesn't have a bomb today. Its best objective, its best hope is that Iran will be a year away if everything works out in this deal. One year in the life of the world away, at which point it can develop a weapon, and then in 10 years, it can be right on the edge and the threshold of having a, nu a nuclear weapon. But it legitimizes it. It isn't as if it's going to be a rogue state anymore, it's going to have any sanctions. And that's what I think the, the world and the opposition here at home is, is swallowing. And when I think the extent of this is clear, there's going to be a huge rebellion against and it. Is okay, but well, let me just ask this. If the Obama administration says, okay, listen, we are going to bend over backwards to try. And if the Iranians say no, then we have bent over backwards. And the world, when the world has to go to war, the U.S. has tried. And what if Iran says yes? That's the issue. But you don't believe right. that the opposition in Congress will do anything to shift the terms of this negotiation in the next four At weeks? At this point, we've already given them the store and the key and the warehouse next door, and we're going to retract that. This administration, desperate to have an agreement, and it has shown on every issue at every step of the way, it will give it away to get an agreement. That's where Even on verification, it depends heavily on the good faith of the Iranian regime. You never want to be in a position to depend on the good faith of the Iranian regime. Next up, the president vetoes the Keystone XL pipeline bill. It's official.